Welcome to Sculpture Studios. It's not every day we're asked to make iconic characters, let alone a character as recognisable as Snoopy from Charlie Brown. In the run-up to the release of the new Peanuts movie, we've been contacted by Robert Woodhouse from Evolve Production Services. Robert's been in contact with 20th Century Fox London and 20th Century Fox LA, and we've been asked to make 15 to 20 Snoopy sculptures laying on his kennel. The idea is that these huts can be painted up by various sponsors and celebrities, similar to the Gromit Art Trail in Bristol, and the Spitfire Art Trail that we made for King's Lynn back in the summer. In the same fashion as the Spitfires, these sculptures are then going to be auctioned off to raise money for charity. What we're using here is their reference and their drawings. I'm going to keep it quite accurate and follow their measurements exactly. Uh, so we've decided to use a PU foam board here because it's nice and crisp and nice and sharp and we can get a lovely finish on this whole thing. And it, we're actually using a 75mm board uh, because that is the uh, determined shape of the plank that we're going to use. And I'm working out the actual hut height here and with all the dimensions and the Snoopy is going to be laying across the top but we're going to sculpt him in polystyrene and get a beautiful finish. And the whole idea is we make the house separately, make a mould and then make up this, the house that is all together uh, as one unit and then Snoopy, we're going to make a mould and make him as one unit and then we're going to send away the casts to be painted, they'll come back and we'll probably bolt Snoopy on top. Uh, so keep the whole job nice and, uh, nice and smart and crisp. And this here. worked out the pitch of the roof, 60 degree angle yeah. and uh, the whole thing's being kept hollow so they can just be moulded and laminated from the inside but the 75mm ensures that the planks that are going on the roof stay 75mm thick so they look like thick thick wooden boards, thick wooden planks for the roof. Yeah. We'll keep you posted along the whole way and uh, yeah, progression of the whole thing should look smart. Creating something iconic can always go one of two ways. Sometimes with a design, regardless of how vague something looks, as long as the general shape and the overall gist of the piece is there, that's often all it really needs. But for a job like this, even though you could look at a very rough sketch of Snoopy and still know exactly who it is, as a sketch was pretty much all he was at the beginning, 20th Century Fox actually want a very specific design. We're basing all these measurements and the scaling up from a 3D CAD render, and we're trying to get the measurements as close as we can to what we've been sent. Blocking out from the usual polystyrene or styrofoam for Snoopy himself, we've projected the concept image onto the foam from multiple viewpoints, and we've hot-wired the bulk section. One of Aiden's favourite parts now, he begins carving using nail and wire brushes, taking down the appropriate material, aiming to leave the form represented in the concept images. Once the majority of the form is achieved, Aidan then uses stonemason rifflers to accentuate the shape a little more and to get into the harder to reach areas. Rifflers are also being used on the foam shape of the hut, where the cartoonish detail on the wood grain and the plank edges are being carved into the surface. When he's happy with the overall pattern of the Snoopy, the surface is going to be cleaned up using sandpaper to lose the polystyrene bead texture. In order to have the surface suitable to take a mould from, we're using a water-based plaster filler and sanding it back so that a smooth finish is achieved. When Snoopy and the Hut are both fully carved and ready for moulding, we invite Robert down to the studio to see the progress of the work. Though we often send photographs to keep our clients updated along the way, it's always good when we can have them visit the workshop to talk everything through properly. They can gain a better sense of size and scale of the job, and it's just a little more personal and hands-on than simply talking over the phone or through emails. It's also good to have a client like Robert that understands the project from the start and knows what's involved, but a visit would also clarify anything that can't be seen over the phone or emails and allows him to take a proper look and oversee the project. Though it's good to create something that will please 20th Century Fox, at the end of the day it's companies like Robert that would potentially be contacting us again for future projects, so our main concern is that he's happy with the work. For the hut we're going to be creating a strong fibreglass mould that breaks apart into six sections. 
two parts for the roof and four parts for the sides of the huts. These will be able to be bolted together and joined once each part has been laid up in fiberglass. We begin by adding a 2K primer to seal the yellow foam and to get rid of that porous foam texture. We then add layers of PVA blue release agent to the pattern so the fiberglass mould pieces can pull off the job a little easier. The fiberglass is going to be 6 ounces in build up for the mould as this needs to be strong enough to withstand 15 to 20 multiple pulls for all the huts. For the cars themselves these are going to be 4 ounces thick which will be nice and durable to go outside. We wax the interior of the mould pieces before each casting process and this just protects the inside of the moulds ensuring the cast can be released without causing any damage. When casting a gel coat is added first once the wax has been rubbed back and buffed and this creates a good working surface when the cast comes out as opposed to the fibrous matte texture that goes on behind it. We're using general purpose resin as these snoopies are going to be used outside and this cures quickly enough in comparison to Classo rated resin so we can get a complete hut laid up, joined and released from the mould in a day. In the back corner we've gel coated all, all the way around the seam line and then we've gone in with two ounce mat and we've been trying to get down here and we're glad we left 70 mil gap because any smaller and we're, A we wouldn't be able to see and uh, we have to use this and a brush and some mat and try and get it as neatly as we can into the very back corner all, all the way this top seam and around the whole lot and hopefully if we've taken our time enough we've done it really well then we take out all, this, all the bolts along the seam and undo the mould and then fix it to the bottom half of the kennel. The insides of the kennels aren't too bad surface wise anyway but um, we've got a request from the client to add a flow coat on the inside so that it's safe to touch because they want to use it as real kennels and possibly kids getting inside just to yeah. have a little explore as well. If, if I'm to run my fingers across here I can feel little splinters and the flow coat just adds a nice black coat on the inside to make the kennel nice and dark and it loses this kind of sharpness of the fiberglass itself. It's not too bad but just to be double sure we'll flow coat it it gives a nice smooth surface on the inside and nice and dark at the same time. Here you can see the bottom section of the hut has been laid up and the mould pieces are being put together so they could be joined from the inside. When finished the roofs are then put on top of the base sections so they could be fixed together as one unit. Hello. Just give us a quick brief of what, what you're up to. Uh, I'm bolting together the base part and the roof. First of all, I've matched it up so it's even on both sides and at the moment I'm clamping down the tops and then the sides and then in between I can get the bolt, uh, can drill holes evenly spaced along and put bolts through and tighten it up and do it systematically. So I'll do this top side first, then this top side and then I'll go along the sides once it's all matched up, make sure all the gaps are nice and tight and then take off all the clamps afterwards and then fill from the outside so it's all filled in. Yeah. Very neat, That's very good. neat indeed sir. Once the huts are fixed together, they're then given a layer of white 2K primer. This will provide a nice base surface for the artwork and allow us to see any imperfections that need to be filled or worked on. We're making the huts in batches of 4s, 5s and 6s and sending them off to be painted periodically. Timing was very important for this job and with deadlines changing all the times due to amendments in the schedules, we need to make sure we were able to keep up with production and stay on target. All the huts need to be finished first so they can be sent off for artworking and we'd work on the Snoopies later on. We're going to go and join Aidan now for the new design amendments to the Snoopy Master Pattern. First of all, we have Snoopy here, carved out of polystyrene, gridded it up exactly to the drawings. And there was his original drawings here. And he, he looks lovely. Uh, I've taken him to Soho. Everyone adored him. It really had that kind of wow factor. Uh, and when I asked for sign off, they sent it to LA or America somewhere, um, 20th Century Fox people, and they've made loads and loads of amendments. Uh, my Snoop is correct, it's just that they want it looking different now. Uh, the main thing is there's a bit of a timing issue. and. Um, Funny enough, well, we can create something of this fairly quickly, but what takes longer is getting the approval of your client to make sure they're happy, uh, which is always an issue. So what we've agreed to do is now scrap this one totally, and we're going to work on this one. I'll show you drawings there. And this is what they actually want now. They're drawn over the top of my original uh, images. And the same here for the hut. 
and I'm re-sketching the whole thing out now to what they really want. Uh, this should have been really done in the beginning, the very early stages, instead of us going through a double process. But hey ho, this is what happens with design. So well, I'm going to make up this one now and I'll show you the process as we move through this second Snoopy. With the new design now being approved, we're starting to mould the Snoopy. Silicon rubber is applied in multiple layers, and we're using rubber so the mould can reach all the tighter spaces and the cast will be easy to extract. We've made sure we've got the go ahead from Robert and everything's above board, and he's come down to the studio once again to check in on the progress and to collect the next batch of Snoopy huts. The rubber tabs you can see in the thicker wall around the edge of the mould will help the rubber locate into the jacket. The jacket's going to be made from fibreglass, and this ensures the rubber retains the correct shape while it's being laid into. We go on with the gel coat first so the rubber has a nice smooth surface to sit into, then we lay up with 6 ounces of glass fibre. Like the mould created for the hut, this needs to be durable enough in order to extract 15 to 20 casts. Moulds generally have an expiry time or a life, so we need to make sure we always take care of the mould so it lasts the duration of the project. Here we have the mould, and it's actually um, made in two halves so it can come apart. We'll add one side first of all so it's nice and flat, then we'll add the other side nice and flat, and when the two sides are set, we put two together and join it up. And here we can see Jessica here, she's gel coated it and now she's laying in the fibreglass which then fixes the two together. We leave it to set for a whole day. Tomorrow morning we'll undo the thing and pop it out and we should have a whole complete Snoopy. Now if you'd like to follow me over here, and that's the whole thing, kind of complete with a seam line, which we're cleaning up at the moment. And we're getting a lovely surface so you can't see any kind of seam or feel any kind of bump whatsoever. I'll offer it to the top of this. And in each case, we know it's 21 centimetres in there. And that acts as a good registration or, or location point. So it's 21 centimetres to there, and that fits every single time. And we've made sure we've waxed up the top of this. And we've done a squidge join underneath. Car body for life. A nice good shoulder on the whole lot. And also it ensures that when we put it down and put it to 21 centimetres, it fits the contours and the grain of this woodwork exactly. So that any Snoopy should be able to fit, in essence, any yeah. hut relatively neatly. And Well, that's the whole idea. Also, what we've done is we've cut out holes in the head and the body of this whole area and we've inserted brackets like metalwork here. And when it comes to the day, after they've finished all the painting and they've lacquered it and it looks fantastic, we offer this Snoopy down to the 21 centimetres Drill up through the bracket, drill through the horn, uh, the ears, and we look and lock it all down nice and tight without touching any of this artwork at all. Um, another request is these eyes were actually made raised on some of the Snoopies, uh, and at late notice, but we are getting on with it, they've said, can we take it off altogether and raise it about 10 millimetres up? So instead of having a raised eye, it's now it's going to be a painted eye. And, and once they're happy and we've had agreement on where the eye goes, we're going to make a template in the back with the eye cut out. So every time we put the eyes on, we draw around the template and 
we know the eyes are in exactly the same place as every single Snoopy in production. Um, yeah, we've just got finishes now, add the red collars and the black marks and give these an overall finish and they look fantastic. The laborious task of cleaning up now commences. Believe it or not, it's not the carving or the moulding that takes the most time. If anything, the cleaning up often takes more time than the other processes put together. We know these are going to be within touching distance of the public, spectators being able to get right up close, so we wanted to have a really good finish on these. With a character like Snoopy, we really wanted to do Fox Proud. We've been sent Pantone colours for the Snoopy collar, and to give the body the same strong finish that the huts have had, we're using the same 2K white primer. We did test samples for the black using water-based emulsions, but in the end we upgraded to high saturation paints for a more solid finish. Where the huts are being individually painted, the Snoopies are actually going to be left in his original white, so they should stand out nice and bright on top. We make sure we add all the final touches and ensure the seam lines are invisible, and the Snoopies are then sprayed with a 2K gloss lacquer. The huts were brought up to Perry Scenic to be decorated with the celebrity designs, and to ensure that they had the same weatherproof finish for the artwork, they're coated in the same 2K gloss lacquer as well. The official dimensions are about 5 foot 7 tall in the end, and designed so that they can be used as real kennels after the event. They were first revealed in London's Regent Street at the end of November 2015, and they then moved on to other locations around the UK. These locations included Birmingham, Swansea, Manchester and Liverpool, and travelling all the way up to Glasgow in Scotland. They were auctioned off through Rosebury Auction House for ITV's Text Santa, and this was in order to benefit Macmillan Cancer Support, Make-A-Wish UK, and Save the Children. Here you can see some of the images we found online for the ones that were put up for auction, and in the final shots there are a couple more also decorated for the public event. We'd like to thank Robert Woodhouse from Evolve Production Services for entrusting us with the work and being a brilliant liaison between our company and Fox throughout the project. It was also a great privilege to work for 20th Century Fox once again. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.